this lecture, we are going to discuss what is known as the supply chain. And we are going to focus on some of the carbon materials, some representative uh, examples we are going to take. Okay. So many of you might be aware of what is uh, a supply chain. Maybe uh, those from engineering backgrounds definitely learned uh, about uh, supply chain management and also operations research during their bachelor's degree. But anyway, I'm going to give a brief overview and um, sort of to remind you, what do you need to do when you want to move from manufacturing to production? Hmm, okay, so what is supply chain by definition? Supply chain basically um, involves all these steps um, starting from, let's say, the production of uh, or the procurement of your raw materials hmm, all the way to, you know, providing the final product to your customer and even customer service at times. Hmm. So this entire chain is known as the supply chain. Okay. Now, although it is called a chain, it is actually not a so chain when you think of, what do you think? So think in terms of carbon materials. So chain is carbine. Hmm. But supply chain is not really as simple as that. It's not really a chain. It's a network because everything is connected to everything. There are, uh, you know, you do not have one individual company hmm, in the entire, uh, you know, business network. Often you have multiple co companies, multiple producers, uh, and also multiple buyers. They are connected to each other. These are the things that you need to think of. Again, when you want to move from, uh, you know, your scientific research um, to, uh, to actually providing a, a product to the customer. Hmm. And even if you're a researcher, often you may have to, uh, you know, have, you will have some deliverables for the industries. Hmm. So you basically need to make something uh, that can be sold. So in that case, it's very important for you. Maybe there is a certain scientific process and you're very happy about your process, but it's uh, it's not scalable or it's not um, cost effective. Maybe you have you can make some very excellent devices, but they are too expensive. So all of these things together, you need to think of. And um, if you want to, again, make whatever you're making, but for the, um, you know, for the general public. In that case, supply chain becomes very important. So again, this is kind of a set of all of these steps involved in, um, you know, in the production of your material, plus not just the production, but getting the raw material from somewhere and supplying the final product to someone. Hmm. Okay, so this is your supply chain. What does it actually mean? You know that there is certain demand for some materials. Hmm. And when there is a demand, you, pro uh, you supply that material. Hmm. Sometimes there is more supply, sometimes there is more demand. And this optimization of uh, you know, supply and demand is what is very important for, uh, for anybody to have a successful uh, business. Hmm. Okay. So um, supply chain basically is the interface between um, the supply and demand. Hmm. Okay. So uh, you need to definitely understand the demand first. Hmm. So if you want to start a business first, you need to understand which type of carbon material. Okay. And why should you produce that? Maybe there is no demand for that material or the demand is there, but only for research purposes. So you don't really need, um, you know, several uh, kilograms of graphene, for example, hmm. because graphene, even if you have 100 grams of graphene, that can uh, that can be used for a lot of purposes. If you're making devices, say, hmm, and you're making devices with single or, you know, few flakes of graphene. Hmm. In that case, how many flakes do you need? Maybe 100 grams of graphene. Uh, will be sufficient for some uh, research lab for a good few years. Hmm. So in that case, how much production is actually required? What are the quantities that are required? Hmm. So and accordingly, uh, what is the cost that is associated with it? Hmm. If you want to make now some other carbon material, let's say carbon black. Yes, the demand is very high because carbon black is required as a reinforcement material for uh, for tire industry. Demand is definitely high. But in that case, you may have to think that there are already a lot of companies who are making it, a lot of manufacturers. So you do have various players in the market. You may have to compete with uh, with really major players and you may not be able to compete with them. You may not because also when the production quantities increase, the overall cost generally decreases. So if you're making something in smaller quantities, then you're going to uh, probably have very high costs involved. And that is why you may not be able to compete with uh, with the companies, larger companies who are producing several thousands of tons of carbon black. So these are the things that you need to think of. Hmm. And this is where you move from research to business. Hmm. OK, so um, yeah, supply chain is a network and supply chain involves multiple things. Um, so 
with the examples it will become more clear but uh, let me tell you what are our goals hmm. so minimize the production time and production cost that is something you understand hmm. because obviously if you have uh, if you can produce something very fast that is good and if you can produce something at a low cost especially lower cost than let's say your competitors in that case definitely you you are at an advantage hmm. okay you also would like to have a um, good production efficiency hmm. and what you should also have this is a very important factor in business is to ensure the quality of your product hmm. if your product is of bad quality maybe it is cheap and so initially a lot of people buy it but you will only have this you know a peak of your uh, sales but after that once people realize that okay no this is uh, although this uh, carbon material is good but it does not really perform the task hmm. so in that case uh, you may not have a good sale or you may your business will uh, die out after some time so ensuring the quality of the product is also very important okay at the end end it is the customer satisfaction so customer satisfaction something that we don't think of huh? uh, when we are making uh, something, uh, especially when you move from science to business, you know, it's it's very difficult because for us, what is important is the quality, of course, of what we make. It's also important um, that we use good manufacturing processes. Good by good, I mean that, um, you know, sometimes you try to use something innovative. Hmm. You want to basically apply a lot of your skills, a lot of your uh, thought process goes into this, uh, you know, into whatever you're manufacturing. We often um, tend to not think of the customer. Hmm, okay, maybe the customer does not really want a very high quality. Maybe the customer does not really care for 99.9% .9 purity, but um, the customer probably wants a reasonable cost. Hmm. If the cost is increasing a lot, when you move from 96% purity, to 99% purity, let's say those are the very, uh, you know, um, those are the steps that require a lot of energy consumption. So this often happens in the case of carbons because uh, you see when you're uh, making carbon fiber, so you're making anything that is graphitic. Hmm. In that case, the last steps of graphitization are the most expensive, most energy consuming steps because you need to go to uh, temperatures as high as 3000 degrees. Hmm. And these processes are also relatively very very slow several days it may take several days to convert um, you know a, a certain set of carbon fibers into graphitic carbon fibers so the question is do we need those kind of uh, carbon fibers what applications require those kind of carbon fibers what is the fraction of those applications hmm. um, because and how many customers do you have this is something that you need to understand because otherwise why should you make something that nobody is going to buy even though it is going to be a very uh, good material you're going to um, have a very high modulus uh, carbon fiber hmm. but at the same time you need to see how many people actually like to buy it how many applications depend upon it hmm. okay so these are some of the aspects that you need to think of okay what are the primary components of uh, supply chain? Um, again, um, you will um, manufacture is the manufacturer is at the center hmm. and then there will be raw material suppliers. And then on the other side, uh, you will have warehouses. Warehouses means uh, storage facilities. Of course, to send your material to the warehouse, you will also have um, some, you know, uh, transport companies involved. Huh? And these transport companies are also involved when you're getting your raw material hmm, to the manufacturing plant. Then you also have people who are involved in selling the uh, material hmm. so for example retailers or some um, other um, uh, even sometimes wholesalers are involved hmm. nowadays there are less and less wholesalers involved in uh, in businesses hmm. okay and a lot of things have also changed um, since we started uh, doing online business but for carbon materials not so much because uh, you carbon materials are often used in you know several uh, in very large quantities especially those carbons which we call industrial carbons. Hmm. So carbon fibers, for example, or preforms of carbon fibers, some of them you could actually buy online, hmm. but um, a lot of them are still um, shipped in several thousands of kilograms. And that is why um, we still do not uh, rely on online uh, products, but for other, some smaller products, hmm, some cosmetics, some, some small things, um, then a lot of things have changed in the supply chain, right? A lot of steps which used to be there are not there anymore. Okay, but these are some of the uh, the primary um, people involved. What are the, peop uh, the, the people? Who are the people? Uh, so first is your marketing team, your um, 
market research team also marketing uh, one when we say marketing that's about selling the product but marketing research uh, marketing team also will do some market research which basically means the team will tell you whether or not you should make a certain carbon material what is the de demand and what is the um, you know predicted demand they will do some forecasting they will do some trend projections and then they will tell you whether or not it, it is feasible to start the business there is always definitely some risk involved but uh, you would like to minimize that risk right so all of these uh, teams in fact risk analysis team i have not written here um often so risk analysis is also not just you know um thinking that oh this is risky or not you actually do a proper mathematical analysis of the risk also and how do you do mathematical analysis so all of these steps that i have mentioned here you must be thinking that these are more uh, general things right um, you know it depends on whether or not you rely on someone whether or not you uh, so that you will be thinking that these are rather social aspects hmm. who supplies the good raw material uh, whether or not you can trust the person who is selling you the or not person but a company uh, selling you the raw material but it's not just that hmm. it is much more than that because you can actually assign mathematical values or numbers to everything that is important to you or unimportant to you hmm. so for example if there is something which is very which is of very high importance to me let's say um i want to um i want to start playing badminton from this weekend onwards hmm. so i have decided that i definitely want to play i have not played for several months and now it is very important for me okay but i realize that i don't have let's say badminton shoes hmm. in that case i'd like to buy the shoes what is most important for me is the time of delivery hmm. i need the shoes now the color of the shoes is not important to me but maybe the quality is but to some extent what is more important now the quality or uh, the time so you can actually assign numbers to all of these things hmm. and then based on these numbers you can see there are maybe three or four uh, you know shoe sellers and you can compare uh, who fits better hmm. who scores more and then you will uh, you accordingly buy something from there so this is valid this is a, a you know very simple simple example but this kind of thing is valid also when you are dealing with um, several different companies several different su suppliers hmm. on both sides now procurement and also uh, you know so sending the uh, the uh, finalized or finished product so these are the things that so we can actually mathematically um, evaluate a number of steps uh, that are either a part of the supply chain or influencing the supply chain hmm. and this entire um, field of study is actually what we call operations research hmm. and operations research um, is very important there are also nowadays a lot of software uh, that can perform this kind of analysis especially when you are dealing with big data hmm. so all of these things um, um, are important when you are starting a business hmm. or when you are in a business even when you are joining a company hmm. okay so yeah this is uh, basically what i said that you can mathematically calculate number of things hmm. and market research will tell you what is the demand um so there are few methods the forecasting trend projections i have uh, told you already but there are many maybe many other uh, small factors you need to uh, ensure before you do your market research hmm, okay now supply chain is not really exactly the same for um, all types of products so especially when you're making carbon materials you are often making the material and not the final product but in some cases you might also be making the final product so what is very interesting for our um, carbon materials either you can make them in bulk so now when i was talking about applications hmm, previously then i told you that there are few carbon materials that are used for making structures hmm. like graphite is uh, when you are manufacturing graphite actually before making the graphite even you give a shape to the precursor itself hmm. so there your structure design structure manufacturing as well as material manufacturing are pretty much the same you do that in the same heat treatment process hmm. okay but on the other hand there are also carbon materials that are rather sold as powders or pellets like activated carbons hmm. they are not really um, so they are not really used for making structures but still the material manufacturing is uh, is important to you hmm. so there are all types of carbon materials if you are making a small device you are making a field effect uh, transistors transistor using carbon nanotube that's also in a way some sort of manufacturing you can call it fabrication you can do it in the clean room 
but it is some sort of manufacturing making something right and there the nature of your product is completely different the cost of your product the raw materials everything is very different hmm. uh, the requirement of your raw material is also very different hmm. the, i mean the re when i say requirement in terms of quantity hmm. so all of these things become important and that is why you cannot have the same type of supply chain uh, for every product even for the same product sometimes the supply chain may vary depending upon what is your raw material again that is a very interesting thing when it comes to carbon materials we don't always have the same type of uh, raw material right even for making say activated carbon i'm going to show you the example you can make activated carbon using um, different types of raw materials right so again accordingly your supply chain will change and it's not always this one single um, type of supply chain that you need to study hmm. okay yeah so um the various parts of the uh, supply chain are uh, of, uh, often assigned numbers. This is something I've already told you, and this is the entire field is known as the operations research. So now we come already to the um, carbon materials, right? Um, what is the demand of carbon materials? So I, I told you that demand and supply are two important things, and our supply chain is connecting the two. Okay, what is the demand of carbon materials? And carbon materials are so many different types of carbon materials. For each one of them, the demand uh, varies. Hmm. So, okay, what I have done here is I have uh, sort of uh, make, uh, made a table where I uh, tell you what is, uh, you know, so for some representative carbon materials based on a quick internet search. Okay, so first of all, some carbon materials have lately become very, very important. Hmm. And you know, one, imp one name that comes to your mind whenever you think of industrial carbons is carbon fiber. Hmm. And not just carbon fibers, carbon fiber reinforced plastics. Hmm. They are used nowadays in, in the automobile industry extensively. They are also used in um, yeah, many other for many other applications. So anything that is uh, that should be lightweight and strong, then uh, you could replace metals with carbon fibers hmm, in principle. So this is one material which has um, lately its demand has really uh, you know gone up in the last few years. And if according to that, you know, if you if you extrapolate that curve then you will realize that oh in the next few years also the demand is going to only go uh, you know only increase hmm. because see the demand for a certain material uh, depends upon the um, the related uh, industries hmm. so automobile industry is growing right uh, and also uh, people have realized that um, if you have a lighter material you require uh, less fuel hmm. so also environmental um, concerns are pushing these kind of lighter um, vehicles hmm. you also nowadays have hybrid vehicles and electric vehicles and for them it is very beneficial to have not just a lightweight car hmm. but also if you can utilize that car for some sort of uh, energy storage hmm. so because our carbon materials are also um, you know electrically conductive electrochemically active they could they can potentially also be used for for uh, the uh, you know storage of some sort of energy so all of these things are actually um, supporting the carbon fiber industry mm. and the demand is drastically increasing. Mm. So yeah, this is the table that I was talking about. This is based on a quick internet search and these are approximate numbers from 2018. I found some reports, okay? So don't hold me uh, accountable if, if some number does not match, okay? But just to give you an idea, number one, these are some of the industrial carbon materials and I have not included nanocarbons. Mm. Because the demand and supply for nanocarbons compared to our um, industrial carbons is still much, much low. And even the production. So here I have uh, mentioned the market in India as well as the global market. And that's why all the costs are in uh, US dollars. So in India, there is um, little market compared to the rest of the carbon materials, of carbon uh, nanomaterials. Also, globally, that is how it is, even when it comes to manufacturing, um, nanomaterials are still much less manufactured, especially in India, because we have environmental concerns uh, related to uh, these nanomaterials, and um, this should definitely uh, be addressed. Hmm, okay, uh, because environmental, uh, 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 any environmental factor is very important to us. If there is some uh, nanomaterial which can cause cancer, um, or you know, its presence in the air is not good for us. In that case, definitely we should think twice before uh, manufacturing it. Hmm. Okay. So these are some of the carbon materials. Okay. Now other bulk industrial carbons you can see from here also uh, show increase. 
in demand. So these are just the numbers of the current market. But even if you project the demand, for example, for graphite, it's not that once we have uh, more advanced carbon materials like carbon fibers uh, and uh, nanomaterials and so on, that does not really mean that the graphite uh, demand has gone low or it has even become uh, saturated or stable. No, the, the demand for all the carbon materials is increasing. Let me give you an example of carbon black. So carbon black is also very strongly connected to the automobile industry, right? Because that is what we use for uh, reinforcement of our rubbers. Hmm. So more advanced tires are also very important for all the cars. Hmm. So these materials have also increased uh, demand. They have seen increased demand in the past uh, few years for sure. Hmm. Okay, so this is, um, you can see it for other carbon materials as well. Hmm. So the idea is that once the application becomes important, um, that increases your demand and that is how then uh, automatically sort of supply increases. Mm. Also, for example, uh, if there are more regulations about um, uh, the cleaning of the industrial wastewater, mm. in that case, what will happen? Now, you will think that this uh, industrial wastewater is not really related to carbon industry, but it is very much related. Activated carbons are the ones that are used for making water filtration columns. Mm. So, uh, indirectly, if there is a regulation that all uh, the water from all the industries should be um, completely clean, purified, in that case, that is indirectly influencing the or increasing the demand of activated carbons. Mm. Okay. Similarly, um, even when there are a lot of research interests in a certain material, mm, even that influences the demand. Mm, okay, um, so if we take the examples of uh, graphene and carbon nanotubes, so these carbon nanomaterials, well, the fact that there has been a lot of um, research mm, or a lot of research interest at least, uh, that has actually increased the demand relatively compared to bulk industrial materials, still much lower. Uh, but if we uh, find an application that can be scaled up and that can be commercialized, mm, a device application of graphene, for example, in that case, the uh, overall demand will suddenly increase and if we are, we are unable to do that then maybe this demand will uh, reach a saturation point hmm. so everything is connected okay so the point is that whether you're a researcher or you're working for a company or you want to start a company it's important for you to understand sometimes even your research might be influenced by the market uh, you know market demand and supply you don't even realize it hmm. uh, in many countries um, for example research is um, more dependent on industrial funding because the governments are not providing enough funding. Hmm. So those countries also depend upon, uh, you know, in their, uh, in that case, it's very important for them to understand the market even when they are uh, doing research. So everything is connected. Hmm. So now let us take some examples. Hmm. This is the first example. You are the activated carbon manufacturer. Hmm. Okay, so I assume that uh, now, from this course, you have learned how to, uh, you even learned about different types of furnaces and you learned um, how to make your activated carbon. You also know that this can be uh, actually made from waste materials. Hmm. So, okay, you are the manufacturer. What are you going to do? What are you going to first think of? Okay, I want to start a company or I have a small company already, let's say. I'm making activated carbon. How do I get my raw materials? Coconut shell, which is uh, one of the most common precursors in India, especially for making um, activated carbon because of the fact that it gives you a very high quality activated carbon. And we also have it available in India. Okay. Coconut shells I get from some supplier. Hmm. Okay. Then I also get the seeds of some fruits, let's say dates, hmm. khajur. Hmm. So I get the seeds because these are also very good precursors for making activated carbon. So I decide that, okay, I will not just use one type of precursor but I will make different grades of activated carbon hmm, from different precursors, maybe also different types. I make pellets and I also make powder. Hmm, okay, so for different types of activated carbons, I need different uh, raw materials. Say there is some raw material that also, um, you know, comes out as the waste from some oil making company. Okay, because a lot of oils, let's say even this groundnut oil, when you make, then after that, you have a lot of, um, leftovers so once you uh, extract all the oil from something then what do you have you have the basic cellulosic skeleton left over right so those cellulosic uh, materials can definitely be converted into uh, porous carbons and activated carbons and so on hmm. so let's say these three are our uh, suppliers of raw materials okay now i 
prepare the manufacturing. I do the manufacturing. Now, I'm not going to go into the details of manufacturing that you already have learned so much in this course. Now, I have some storage facilities. Let's say two of them. And these storage facilities, they supply it to some distributors. Let's say I have three different distributors. Okay. But the warehouse one and warehouse two, both of them do not, you know, they may be supplying the material or sending the material to more than one distributor. Hmm. So let's say the first warehouse is sending it to all three distributors and the second one, let's say, to two distributors. Now remember, all of these arrows, they indicate transport of the material, right? The bringing the raw material, sending the finalized products, product. You know? So you actually strongly depend on, the, uh, on your um, you know, transport companies hmm. and the network of roads and trains. Hmm. So this is also very, very important for you. Often, this is the most important optimization problem when we want to optimize the transportation because transportation has two things involved in it. One is the time. Time of transportation is very important, especially when you're sending, um, you, when, you're, um, you, when you require something which, for example, is very sensitive or when you're selling something that is very sensitive. Let's say you're selling fresh vegetables and you want to get them uh, from different farmers in different parts of the country. What is most important for you is more, more than even the cost, what is more important for you is the, is the time. Hmm. So if the vegetables reach you after three days, then uh, they are not fresh anymore and you are known for selling fresh vegetables. Hmm. Something like that. That will not happen to carbon materials, right? Uh, the freshness doesn't, you can keep it for several um, days and it's still good. Hmm. Most of the carbon materials at least. Hmm. Okay. So um, in general, we strongly depend on transportation um, people. Hmm. Okay. Now, what, what do these distributors do? Now, they send it to some other, uh, you know, companies who are your final customers in this particular case. Mm -hmm. So, let's say there is a water filtration manufacturing company, water filter manufacturing company, and they definitely require um, activated carbon mm -hmm. and they buy it from you. Maybe distributor one and distributor three are selling it. Why not distributor two? Maybe because of the location of the, of the, uh, you know, the warehouse, maybe because of the location of, uh, uh, of the water filter manufacturer. Mm. So maybe for some reasons, it's these two distributors, they sell it to, uh, they send it to your manufacturer. Maybe you also, not just to one company, you're now selling it, you don't have just one customer, you have multiple customers. Mm. So your other customer is some Cosmetics company, they add, they, they activated carbon into some soap or something. So that, that is, they probably do not require as much quantity, but they are also your customers, good customers. Okay. So maybe there are also some of the distributors that are sending it to this cosmetics company. And the a third one is, is a startup started by some um, ambitious uh, students. Um, because they thought that huh, this is easy. All I need is coconut shells. Huh? So I can just make uh, activated carbons. So let's say this is a group of three ambitious uh, students from some IIT or anywhere for that matter. And then these uh, students have started this, uh, this uh, small company. Uh, again, they do not require very uh, high quantities, but they are also your uh, valued customers. Okay. So now again, you see there is a network. Hmm. And again, you depend a lot on the transporters. Now, see, this, this is where your supply chain sort of ends once you reach your customer. Hmm. As long as you can uh, satisfy all the demands and you can keep your customers happy, your supply chain um, as such end. But you also, these now for, if you want to make a supply chain for this uh, water filter guy, hmm, um, they also will have some other uh, suppliers. Maybe they're not just buying uh, uh, the activated carbon from you, but from other manufacturers as well. Hmm. So, also, uh, maybe your um, the uh, students, the group of students, they are also probably making their own activated carbon. In fact, that's what they thought they're going to do, but they just uh, realized that then they thought that, okay, why don't we just also make the uh, air purifiers? Hmm. Um, and then they realized that suddenly the demand has increased so much that they don't have sufficient supply and they don't have the resources to make enough um, activated carbon, uh, but, but they do have a lot of uh, demand for their product final product hmm, okay so in that case they also then started buying it from other companies so the point is that um, the chain doesn't really or the network of supply chain doesn't really end at one point it's just a part of a one big large supply chain hmm, okay so that's why i have made this <coughs> red arrow here now these other manufacturers may also uh, supply their activated carbon to 
some other companies. Huh? So it, it continues. Similarly, um, uh, when you see that um, you have these coconut uh, shell suppliers, they are not really, uh, who is your coconut shell supplier? You're not going door to door and collecting coconuts, right? Um, you probably have some uh, organization or some company that is collecting coconut shells or other types of waste materials and segregating the waste and then probably cleaning it up uh, making um, you know some right size uh, uh, pallets of, of, of an optimum size and that is how they're selling it you don't just take you know individual coconuts hmm. so there is also somebody involved there uh, so they are also connected in that company may also be connected to uh, you know people in some way similarly for uh, your oil uh, making company for example has its own supply chain so the idea is that this is basically what you think of and every supply chain is a part of um, a much larger uh, network hmm. okay so now you will have other related decisions some related decisions some of them we already discussed uh, for example um, you know uh, assigning values to to things uh, based on the importance um, but what you can uh, now when you're a manufacturer you will also have to take some other decisions uh, for example do you want to make powdered activated carbon do you want to make pallets hmm, for which type of carbon you have uh, more customers hmm, sometimes you probably want to make just powder hmm, but you uh, you have more customers who would like to buy pallets so in that case you may have to you should be open to a little bit of uh, you know change in your manufacturing um, as well so a little bit of flexibility you should have hmm. okay now what i have not discussed is what is known as line balancing because that is a part of the manufacturing itself so line balancing uh, also something that is is another related factor and you need to think of the decision line basically your uh, production line or assembly line mm, uh, basically means how your this describes different steps of manufacturing uh, so for example cleaning the coconut shell and then uh, you know uh, optimizing their weight and then placing them in a certain type of furnace and then you have to also think which type of furnace is good for you do you want fluidized bed for example mm, or do you want uh, rotary kiln and that will depend on your application so again the furnace and then you uh, do the packaging of that product hmm, and what kind of packaging you require so this entire uh, the, you may have a certain uh, what is known as production line and assembly line so these are the things also you will need to uh, you will need to uh, pay attention to hmm, okay where should your facility be located so facility we are talking about both manufacturing plant and we are also talking about your offices where you're dealing with the you know, financial matters and so on. You will often see that several manufacturers, they don't have their, uh, you know, head office at the same place where they have the uh, manufacturing unit because of various, uh, of course, various environmental uh, regulations. And also because the, how they want to decide how close do they want to be hmm, to their raw material supplier hmm, or whether they want to be close to the raw material supplier or they want to be close to the uh, warehouse or they want to be close to the final customer that would depend again upon various factors that one very important factor um, is the weight of your uh, raw material or the final product hmm. do you have wet raw materials or dry raw material because if you have wet material that means it carries a lot of weight that means you're going to spend a lot on the transportation so you'd rather stay close to the guy who's selling you the wet raw material then because your final product is is dry hmm. and uh, it's also not important how long will it take uh, during the transport it's okay if your activated carbon reaches the customer or the warehouse in two weeks hmm. um, but uh, the raw material if it is sensitive in that case or if it is wet hmm, in that case so these are the decisions that you need to take accordingly and optimize these things hmm. um, and of course the cost of transportation um, and the availability of transportation these are the things that become important okay and at the end um, the restrictions or the regulations uh, for, of the local government uh, you know that different states within India or different countries in the world have different uh, regulations for businesses hmm. they can be financial regulations uh, for example uh, related to uh, tax payments or they can be uh, they can be regulations related to the environmental policies hmm. so all of these things you need to factor in and then you should start your business so now let us quickly also see one more example okay this example i included because carbon fibers are very important nowadays huh? so um here we'll just quickly go over it 
you are the carbon fiber manufacturer. Now uh, you have learned two or three techniques of making carbon fibers, right? Let's say you are not making vapor grown fibers. Mm, you're not doing CBD because you want very large scale production. Mm, so CBD uh, grown fibers are then more expensive in that case. And also they're not very long, so you cannot, it's difficult to make preforms and so on. So you rather decide that, okay, I'll just do electro spinning and melt spinning. Hmm. But then uh, what precursors do you use? You know that different precursors will give you different types of, uh, of, you know, different modulus of your carbon fiber. You decide that, okay, you'll use both. You'll use pan, polyacrylonitrile, hmm, because that gives you nice and flexible uh, fibers hmm, with good uh, tensile strength. And you also decide that, okay, some of the customers want uh, um, graphitic fibers, high modulus fibers. Mm. So then we are also going to use mesophase pitch for that purpose. Mm. You may use just mesophase pitch or both isotropic and mesophase pitch. These are your two suppliers of raw materials. Pan making, maybe pan you're buying for the company, uh, for the um, you know chemical plant that is producing it. So maybe you're directly buying it from there, but uh, pitch will not be, uh, maybe that pitch is coming from some other petrochemical refinery to these, uh, you know, intermediate um, people. And then you, from them, you buy your pitches. Okay. Now, um, what do you have? You have two types of fibers, right? You have um, high modulus fiber, low modulus fiber. You can also call them, uh, you know, general purpose fibers. So you now make two different types of fibers but once you make these two different types of fibers this is in terms of modulus we were talking about now you also decide that hmm, i want to have short fibers as well as long fibers hmm, so okay short fibers and say braided fibers so you want to again make the short fibers are also used for certain applications you know that hmm, certain types of composites require short fibers rather so you make both hmm, you also make braided ones and then there is a third type that you're also providing is what you call uh, research grade carbon fibers hmm? because for a lot of research purposes what you require is a very high quality of carbon fiber quality could be in terms of modulus mechanical strength microstructure and also in terms of purity hmm? and uh, for many research applications you need to provide exactly what you're saying in the sense that um, even there are very small tolerances hmm, when it comes to research grade materials so you decide that, okay, you can, you're also capable of making some research grade uh, fiber. Hmm, okay, so they will be, they will have a high cost, hmm, so they'll be more expensive, but at the same time, the quantities are, are going to re be relatively low. Okay, relatively small. Hmm. Again, you have this network of who gets, you know, you which high modulus fiber you are making research grade as well and braided as well. And then you see these uh, um, arrows here. Um, and here you can see that um, this, this may or may not require uh, transportation. That depends on whether or not you are in, within your facility able to perform the certain process hmm, of, of making short fibers, for example. Short fiber, now who buys it? There is some company who is making biomedical implants, hmm, bone implants, and they definitely require short fibers. So that they are your customers, hmm, only one customer you have. Uh, but for braided fibers, you have more than one customer. Let's say um, there is some automobile company, uh, they require the preforms and also you have the, pre there is one company that probably only makes the preforms. Hmm. So you have, um, you know, the CFRP companies, composite making companies, as well as the automobile industry. Um, they are your customers. Hmm. Okay. And you also decide that huh, even braided fibers you can sell for research purposes if the quality is good enough. So some of it also goes uh, into your research grade. Hmm. Okay. Now the research grade things are directly sold to the customers. Hmm. That is, um, maybe it is done online even. Hmm. So that is directly uh, sold to the customer. Um, so this is also one of your, uh, one of your strategies. Hmm. Okay. These biomedical uh, company, the, the implant people, they are also buying uh, the different types of different sizes of carbon fibers, maybe also from different uh, manufacturers. Again, as uh, you know, you saw in the previous example, that the supply chain uh, thinks that this chain itself is not independent. Um, and you could actually potentially draw a supply chain for also these automobile part company, for example. No, they will have their own supply chain, which is connected to yours. So this is basically um, is the, uh, the supply chain of carbon fibers. And here also, these red arrows are showing that they, it's, uh, it's you know, connected to other companies and so on. Okay. Now, on your own, you can draw a supply chain network for uh, for various uh, carbon manufacturing um, companies, hmm, if you uh, or various different carbon materials. Hmm. So you can do that as an exercise for uh, yourself. 
Um, and you can also then um, do further analysis. For example, for each step, um, the arrows I said show the transportation. You can actually uh, also mention the cost at every step. Hmm. So then that eats it. When you have also cost associated with the supply chain, you call it a value chain hmm, sometimes. So you can also do this kind of analysis. You can do what is known as the entire network analysis, hmm, which will tell you everything about the time and cost. Hmm. And as I mentioned, a lot of these things nowadays are done um, using certain software. Hmm. But you should know the fundamentals, you know, how it is done. Okay. Um, yeah. One thing that I personally uh, recommend um, that uh, you should always take care of the environmental regulations. See, carbon materials do cause some pollution when we are manufacturing them. But at the same time, it's also not uh, very difficult to ensure that you're not uh, allowing those pollutants to go into the environment. Mm -hmm. So you can actually have a lot of uh, filtration devices, for example, to catch those uh, carbon particles that are unburnt mm -hmm. and then reprocess them. Mm -hmm. Similarly, for flue gases, mm -hmm. so you have these exhaust gases which contain maybe some tar, mm -hmm. but you can actually also um, collect them mm -hmm. and then you can reuse that tar mm -hmm. or even you can use that tar as uh, some type of oil. Mm -hmm. You can even use that kind of tar or collection of that pyrolysis oil, uh, for example, for, um, uh, for making a lot of, uh, for making carbon black. Mm. So using it as a raw material for another industry, you, that can even become your product, mm. one of your byproducts of your company. So the only thing is that you need to think about it and you need, need to uh, make sure uh, this should be something that you should be conscious, you should be aware of. Mm. And then you, this may even help you increase your uh, profitability. Mm. So uh, utilize the waste and also when it comes to making carbon materials, because a lot of cellulosic waste can, uh, uh, can yield good uh, carbons, uh, especially the char uh, type of carbons. Hmm. So in that case, that is something which is highly encouraged and I hope that there is a, a good market for waste derived uh, carbon in the future.